my my idea when I was putting together my list of the top five characters are the five people when they were inserted into the story, uh, when they showed up on screen, um, w when when they made an appearance in any way, like I got excited and I was like, I I'm excited to see where this is going to go. Um, mm -hmm. that that's kind of how I define characters, just like their presence made it better, and uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be for the for like good reasons. I'm not saying like these are the guys I was rooting for or anything. It was just like. I like in terms of the story. I liked when they were involved. That's how mm -hmm. I defined it. Okay, I like that. I, I would say for me, it was the the impact of the story, like you're saying, but also the fact that uh, like the, just the person themselves, right? So I have a little bit of just like affinity for that human being, like who they are as a character. So I, I have a little bit of a tinge to what you're saying, but also the, their stories contributed to the story, so it all works out in the end. So, okay, top five. We're, we're on the same page. I like it. Okay, go ahead. I'll let you start, as always, with your number five pick of the, the, the top five characters of The Last Dance. Yes, number five for me is uh, it's pretty easy. And, and it's a guy that honestly didn't get much screen time, but he got a, enough for me to put him in my top five. And, and it's a guy that I, I really, I'm growing to like more and more as I, as I see more and more. And it's because I see so little. And it's Larry Bird, uh, Larry Legend, <laughs> number five on my list. Uh, Again, the greatest four words ever strung together said to Michael Jordan after a game seven. Uh, a guy that, you know, was there in 1998 as the coach, you know, for the Eastern Conference at Madison Square Garden for the All-Star game. Uh, witness, you know, bore witness to the Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant uh, passing of the baton. A guy that is a, you know, obviously a staple in basketball forever. And uh, I just loved his little insertions, you know, like when he's there, you know, in the Monte Carlo game, when he has to just basically tell Magic, hey, buddy, it's his world now. We're living in it. And uh, and Larry always had those little marks where it's like, if Jordan needed that, you know, seal of approval, he got it from Larry Bird. Larry, Larry Bird calls him God, you know, disguised as Michael Jordan. We see that in 86. Um, those three benchmarks, I think, all define how much Jordan grew into being the greatest player in the game at the time. My number five is iPad Michael Jordan. Um, mm. th 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 we got a few iterations of the Michael Jordan. Um, obviously, we have, like, the footage of old – of, of I almost said old. I met young. Michael Jordan back in the day, the player, as it was happening. But even of the the present day, quote unquote, Michael Jordan, there were a few different sets that they were using. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and he was he was he was wearing shitty clothes in all of them. Like he was wearing very baggy jeans and <laughs> in his mansion, <laughs> like a, yeah, yeah, smoking yeah. a cigar, drinking. Yeah. yeah the guy it, it'll it'll always be funny to me that like one of the biggest fashion icons technically in the world is has horrible fashion. But um my fa the, the best version by far is the iPad Jordan when they'd hand him the iPad. Anytime the iPad was being handed to Michael Jordan, I got excited about what was to come. A lot of times it was nonsense. Him laughing at Gary Payton, even though demonstrably Gary Payton did guard him pretty well, um, mm -hmm. or as well as anyone could possibly guard Michael Jordan. Uh, like it, he, he was wrong to like laugh at. Like it was kind of unfair mm -hmm. to Gary Payton, but it was mm -hmm. still hilarious. So like anytime he got handed the iPad, I got very excited about it. Um, and and what what was the there was Reinsdorf talking about how the Bulls got blown up. That was the last shot of that we got on this one. Yes, yes. And yes. just the side eye he gives uh, was absolutely perfect. Every reaction was was memeable. We'll say that that Jordan got when he had the iPad. So that's my number five characters: iPad, Michael Jordan. It is insane to me that Michael Jordan in this day and age is still able to find a way to connect. And he realized through crying Jordan that that was a way, but he knew he had to change it from crying Jordan. So this was like a way to manipulate it back yeah. to laughing Jordan, which is <laughs> honestly, what a, what a marketer. I don't understand it. He might be actually God. This guy is <laughs> Michael Jordan. I'm not sure. Um, that's a great pick, though. I love iPad MJ. Uh, that's, that's amazing. He was great. Uh, next up for me, number four. It's a package deal. Uh, it's the Scotties, and it's Scott Burrell mm -hmm. and Scotty Pippen. Um, and the reason, like you said, this is a relating to the storyline. Michael Jordan uh, having Scott Burrell to on saved him from on Scotty Pippen, and I don't think mm -hmm. anyone enjoyed it more than Scotty Pippen, um, who at one point we see in, the, in episode nine, he's sitting next to Scott Burrell as Jordan basically is berating him about actually showing up. And being ready to play, unlike his lazy asses every other day. <laughs> um, and Scott Burrell and Scottie Pippen are just like laughing at MJ, but they're also listening to MJ. And you know, we've seen the like the, the Scotty miss free throws. We've seen Jordan uh, wanting to point out all of Scotty's many missed opportunities. Um, that is the classic alpha trying to supplant someone to be a beta. Um, I am one of those people that thinks that Michael Jordan is beyond being an alpha because most alphas means that you're not very intelligent. You just think you are. 
Um, I think that he's an omega, uh, but he's an alpha. He's an alpha. He's an alpha when he talks to the Scotties. And uh, the Scotties take it well. The Scotties obviously were down for the ride. And Scott Perrell, I mean, he was such a good sport throughout the whole thing that I uh, I just love the Scotty. Anytime the Scotty's were there, I was like, all right, here comes a good MJ live. Do you think he was talking – do you think he he ripped on Scott Perrell so much because it was uh, – it was his way of actually yelling at Scotty Pippen. A hundred percent. Calling Scotty yeah. Pippen. Uh, 100%, he, yeah. the whole, the whole, Scott Burrell's biggest mistake was that he was named after he had, he shared the exact same name as the second best player on the team. Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. he wanted to say Scotty every time, but he just he stopped with Scott. Scott. He's like, yeah. Scott. Great pick. Uh, number four for me is Jerry Krause. Um, again, mm-hmm. like, I was not cheering for Jerry Krause per se. I wasn't, uh, I do, I do think Jerry Krause got did a little dirty. Um, mm-hmm. I like that they came around. I like that Scotty, at least in the end said he's, did, did he actually call him the greatest GM ever? Mm-hmm. Kind of guy. Maybe I'm I'm paraphrasing, but it was close. No, to he him. did. He called yeah. him the greatest GM ever. Yeah. yeah so they, he kind of came back around and gave him some credit for it all because I, I did find that like kind of strange in the first few episodes where they're just ripping on Kraus and no one stops to say like he sort of assembled all of the pieces around Jordan. Like, does yeah. he get credit for that at all? Um, but I don't really. I'm, I'm not saying I, I don't really care either. I don't have a strong enough opinion to say like he he's I like him, dislike whatever. But uh, just anytime Jerry Krause was involved, it was great content, and especially mm-hmm. especially when it was footage of Michael Jordan bumping into Jerry Krause <laughs> back in the day, and he would just make short jokes. And Jerry, oh my gosh! The the idea that anytime Jerry Krause liked a guy, Michael Jordan tried to kill that guy on the mm-hmm. court. Uh, mm-hmm. it, it just Jerry Krause's whole presence. Made this documentary so much better. Uh, number three on my list as I moved down, um, BJ Armstrong. Uh, BJ mm. is uh, someone that I've been able to to know about Michael through BJ. He's known Michael for a long time. Uh, I just love I noticed that. you're calling him Michael a lot. Is that is that a PJ tick that you picked up on? You, no, uh, he calls him he he calls him M. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I call him Michael because like I want to call him Mike, like he's my friend, but he's not my friend. Uh, <laughs> Michael Jordan. Uh, I I was able just to hear a bunch of these stories, and I never believed them. You know what I mean? Like even the the ninety five one on one game, like BJ told me that mm-hmm. story, and I didn't believe that that was like how that happened because I had never heard that. But Michael never really told those stories, um, so it was cool to see that. And then the Hornets game, obviously, I'm a Hornets fan. <laughs> So I remember 98 them being against the Bulls. I was pulling for the Bulls because everyone pulled for Michael. Um, mm-hmm. And Michael obviously beat the Bulls, but BJ had that big moment. And uh, Michael, yet again, just was like talking the whole time. And that's like one of his best friends. And it's just, I, <laughs> I just don't, I've never seen anything like it to use like a documentary to talk to your friends in real life. And yeah. uh, I think yet again, that man, that's masterful work. And there's that never, is. there's never the follow-up. It's never, Jordan never is like, <laughs> there's never the but. There's never the <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. He keeps never, it, listen, we had some we had some battles, man. Like I, me and Reggie, we got after it. Like I wanted to kill him, mm. but no, he's a great dude. And I, you know, no, there's never the butt. It never comes back around, and that's uh, he's a psychopath. <laughs> <laughs> he's a winner. He's a winner. Yeah, he's a winner. <laughs> uh, number three for me uh, is is. The Sniff brother, John Wozniak, I believe is his name. Yeah, John Michael Wozniak, JMW. Yeah, the, with, the, yeah. with the Jerry Curl, the, 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 the blonde-haired guy. You know the yeah. guy. The guy that beat Michael Jordan at quarters. Um, he didn't really have a huge presence after the quarters game uh, in, in the sense that, like, he wasn't – they didn't really talk about him much and he didn't hear his voice, but – he he kept popping up because once one uh, that that's what made him a fun character was I was the the Leonardo DiCaprio meme from uh, uh, Once Upon a Time pointing at the camera yeah, yeah, pointing yeah, at yeah. the the TV screen. Um, every time Wozniak came up, it's like there's there he is he's walking behind him right there that, that that's the guy. So that was pretty fun. That made it fun throughout the thing. Uh, obviously he, he was the guy I think that had the biggest rise to. Unfortunately he's passed away um, because he would be he would be capitalizing like crazy right like he, mm-hmm. he he had the biggest rise of like nobody knows literally nobody knows that this guy exists and then now he's like one of the biggest stars of the of the whole documentary so i had him at number three anytime he showed up on the screen i got excited i pointed and i was like there's the guy there's the sniff brother yeah absolutely and uh, he got like the full gift treatment he got like like you said the full shoulder shrug and they, they also did a really nice job like by memorializing the people that did pass that, mm-hmm. that meant a lot to michael you know with john michael wozniak like you said and obviously kobe bryant who we saw early on in the series and yeah that was all great but i mean i'm right there with you so the sniff brothers are number two for me um mm-hmm. and i since you talked about john michael i'm gonna talk about gus Lett. and uh, the reason i'm gonna talk about gus Lett is because one his wife i mean what what are like just like beautiful woman, just like telling her husband's story. And Gus, he was like basically Michael's talker for him. You know, like Michael would hit a shot and then like Gus is there to remind Reggie that he hit the shot. 
or re- remind Reggie <laughs> that he had 30 points in the second half, you know, just in case you wanted to check him. Um, and Gus, you know, coming for game seven off chemo, uh, Michael Jordan has promised the world that they will win this game seven or just told everyone they're going to win game seven. Gus to be there, him to give the game ball to Gus. Um, I think, you know, Michael is a, a family guy uh, deep down, even though I think a lot of people think he's a psychopath. Um, I'm not going to say that he's not a little bit of one, but uh, the Gus moment was a beautiful moment, and uh, the Sniff Brothers, like, it, it's it's unfortunate that fame makes it so his best friends and closest confidants are his security personnel, um, yeah. but it also goes to show how he treated those people that work. No, he's de- I think Michael's definitely a fan. I think Michael Jordan is more of a family guy of the family he was born into versus yeah. the family he then created himself, you know what I mean? That seems to be the vibe. Is like Exactly. Yeah, because yeah. it seems like, yeah, I don't know. Clark Kent, Clark Kent, Clark Kent has a family, right? You know, and Superman is Superman, right? Like, so right. it's just different. Um, my number two is Scott Burrell. We kind of already talked about it a little <laughs> bit. I just want to shout him out that he got a ten trillion in the in Game Six of the uh, ninety eight Finals. Um, but all the Scott Burrell content was hilarious. The guy did he really get a ten trillion? He got a ten trillion. Ten trillion. So he's a, like he's absolutely useless. Like that's hilarious. Yeah, like, yeah, Michael Jordan yes. was. That's so good. That's yeah. so good that he has Scott Burrell. That's and so when he first, the first big moment that he had was when MJ was basically saying that Scott Burrell, that basically, yeah, like the whole narrative that every other guy involved with the Bulls is out. Uh, Scott Burrell is out getting drunk and and running with women and doing like mm-hmm. we we remember that clip. Michael Jordan obviously never doing that. Yeah, yeah exactly. 10 o'clock every night. Yeah, yeah. Um, hundred percent. So that was that was the first we saw of Scott Burrell. It was hilarious. I sort of thought that would just be like a one off thing. Um, that would be Scott Burrell's lasting legacy in this. Unfortunately for Scott Burrell, it was not. It got worse. It just kept happening over and over and over. And it got it got to the point where it actually became like if I was Scott Burrell watching it. He has to love it. I'll he has to love it. I'll just be yeah. like, this is so good. This is so, so good. My number one is uh, the Jordan family. Uh, and, and by that, uh, Michael Jordan, obviously, uh, is, sits at the throne of that. But yeah, I couldn't say Michael Jordan was number one in his own documentary, even though he was trying to be number one. And what I mean by that is that he was working to, like Scott Perel, he had a message for Scott Perel. He must have remembered that he had a 10 trillion. So he spent this documentary just deciding <laughs> to absolutely <laughs> roast him. Um, and I think like, that's why I say the Jordan family, Dolores Jordan did such a great job painting the picture of, like you said, Michael, what he, the family that he grew up in, you know, being, you know, a, a country boy from North Carolina, learning these values and all these sorts of things. And yes, sir, no ma'am type of attitude that he had from his mom and his family. And also we see the other side of Michael Jordan, right, that, that he grew into when he became Air Jordan. And now we see the other side where he is you know, battling the, the, the conflict between being an absolute winner who will do anything to do that and being a normal human being but also he had fun like this was the most fun i've ever seen michael jordan have uh, outside of playing basketball uh you mentioned the ipad i mean i guess i would say number one is mj with the ipad because i saw michael jordan react i saw michael jordan be human mm-hmm. i saw michael jordan look at gary payton laugh at gary payton mm-hmm. turn into air jordan and son him in front of us but at the age of you know mm-hmm. over 50 years old and i think um, a lot of times when you reflect and you, and you go back to things, it can be tough. And I think Michael has never wanted to say his career is over. I think that's why the Hall of Fame speech, he was so mad, right? He had to admit it, it's over. He can't win seven. Um, he can't win more than Kareem. And I think that's the stuff that that guy thinks about, and you know, to this day probably. And, in fact, when he said he wants to win seven, I'm a, I'm a Hornets fan. I'm like, let's go win seven, Michael. Like, go put on a jersey. Like, we don't care. We'll throw you the ball in the post. And <laughs> that's – that's sort of why I think he's number one because Michael, like, it, like Steve Kerr said it. You know, it's my story and I'm sticking to it. Like, this is Michael Jordan's story mm-hmm. and he's sticking to it. This is how they won uh, their sixth championship. And yes, there can be some questions asked as to the the absolute validity to everything that was that was shown or said. But at the end of the day, Michael told it his way and he had fun doing it. And oh, uh, I I loved it. I loved it so much. Yeah. Uh, my number one. Dennis Rodman. Um, <laughs> yes, yes. I'm just going to yes. say. Yes. We uh, need a Dennis Rodman, another listen, Dennis Rodman duck. I know Bill and Ryan, I know Bill and Rastillo said that he's not interesting. Um, that became a big thing after the, the Rodman episode um, that that they, they were claiming he's not interesting. I couldn't disagree more. I, I, Dennis, I, I already knew a lot of the stuff that, that they were talking about. I, I didn't remember that he went to the, he did the, the Vegas trip in the middle of the season. I did not remember that. I did remember the, uh, the, w, the WCW. Um, yeah, the, the game three leaving after game yeah, three. Yeah. I remember him leaving after game three. But, uh, 
everything involving Dennis Rodman, he, he not only is he interesting, he is by far the most interesting player on the team. I mm-hmm. he's he's more interesting to me than Michael Jordan because Michael Jordan's a greater player, obviously, but Michael Jordan's story kind of is like follows an obvious script of like, I want to win, I do win, I'm great, people love me. Like it just mm-hmm. kind of falls in line. Mm-hmm. Dennis Rodman is just a loose cannon that uh, you have no idea what the hell the guy's gonna do. Um and anytime he came on screen, anytime any content involved Dennis Rodman, I put me firmly in the camp of I could not get enough of it. I could not get enough of like trying to contextualize what this would be like if it happened today. If if J.R. Smith, after game three of the finals, just leaves LeBron, you know, mm-hmm. and it, he's nowhere to be found, and he's mm-hmm. and then he shows up on WCW <laughs> Monday night. Honestly, that would be epic. That would be so good. Like that, the, trying to trying to wrap your brain around that. Uh, the Car- Carmen Electra dating Carmen Electra as all this is happening. Um, just all of it, all of it was great. And then on top of it, like Dennis Rodman, just the, the type of player he was. Where he, not only did he play hard, but like just he would rebound, but he wouldn't score. But he played like he was obviously very valuable. But then like he, he was valuable in a way that like very few players are ever valuable. Mm-hmm. Um, his whole existence is fascinating to me, and uh, I, I just love every every second that he was involved with this. Uh, weirdly enough, his interviews do suck. Like, if, if that's what Bill and Rosilla were saying, like, his interviews aren't interesting. That's the least interesting thing about him is when you sit down present-day Dennis Rodman and ask him questions, I don't really care to hear what he has to say. I just mm-hmm. want, like, someone recapping. And then Dennis did this, and then he showed up at this time, mm-hmm. and he was hungover then, and then he went here. That's the stuff that I find bad. And, and he's smashing Miller lights as he's getting on his motorcycle to leave the arena. And yeah. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. running, <laughs> running, running out from 300 media people. Exactly. It yeah. Just being an absolute, uh, like, it's it, a clown it, show. And you, you contrast yeah. it to like Jordan, who's like so image conscience, conscious, uh, and, and just like so straight laced and like it's so, uh, just put so much thought into the, 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 what his perception is. Mm-hmm. And then Dennis Rodman's the exact opposite. It's, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, it's like the Breakfast Club. It's like all these different people that are all sitting in the same room. And, it, and you know, one of my favorite Robin moments is when Coach, you know, 970 throws down the dunk, which is, you know, nothing that Michael Jordan probably would do uh, because he's, like, trying to be all sportsmanship at that time. But Coach throws down the dunk. That's his individual personality. He's like, yes. Like, we did, like, bang, back to back. And Dennis Robbins right there, and they hug each other. And it's just like, <laughs> these two guys, like, when would you ever see this Croatian man and Dennis Robin yeah. embracing, loving, hugging each other like this? And, and it's funny because, like, there's this – Dennis was always weird like that. He would have that big, you know, embrace. He had so much emotion. But then you see in the locker room, Michael's hit, dapping everybody up, saying what's up, and Dennis just walks right by him. And, like, yeah. they didn't even talk to each other. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, Dennis is, like, over it. Like, he's, like, past the game, and, like, he's, like, completely off into the world. And Phil knew that he had to be out in the world to be yeah. great. And yeah. I, I don't know. I, I kind of – I'm fascinated by people that don't have to have a regiment and can still – be yeah. great at what they do um and dennis is the worm for a reason and uh i mean he's yeah he was number one to me i i but i i, I say that weirdly enough i didn't really need more of dennis rodman like i thought we got the perfect yeah. amount i didn't want it to be a dennis rodman doc focused documentary but every time he was on screen i he got my attention the most if 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 they said dennis rodman's name i was locked in and i was like tell me everything you know please yeah. Yeah, I would say Steve Kerr and Phil Jackson, we should both. I think both of us would yeah. mention that they should probably be on that list as well. And Steve Kerr oh. was a great uh, final act uh, at the end of this thing. So. I like that. For the best access, perspective, and personalities in all of sports, follow us at Fox Sports on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube.